Shalom, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to a live episode of Life with Sharon back on, but in the evenings. Life with Sharon was on during the day, but now we're on in the evening and we have a lineup of great topics for you this season. So I am so glad that you are joining me and that you are just hanging in there with me with the flow of what I'm doing on the Full Life Communications television network. Yes, it is a television network and we're doing social media live shows now, but stay tuned for the television shows simultaneously. But tonight, our show is about power thinking and my guest is Stanley Green and he is the president and CEO of Power Thinking Corporation. And so you're probably wondering, well, well what is power thinking? Well, if you read the description, you know what it is and Stanley is going to talk to us about that tonight and how you can become a power thinker to then change the outcome of things that you want in different areas of your life. It really works. There's research behind it. And if you become consistent with it, you can change your thinking for the better. So before I introduce Stanley, please subscribe to the YouTube channel, like the Facebook page, click the notification bell so you'll be notified whenever we're on and like the video. So without further ado, welcome to the show, Stanley. How are you this evening? Well, Sharon, thank you very much for having me. You're doing great. Great. You look like you're doing great. You look like a power thinker. That's right. That's right. <laughs> I better be, right? We're talking you about better it. be. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Well, Stanley, many years just, of power thinking. Many years. Absolutely. So just you just started it off. Share with the audience how long you've been doing this and also to how you got involved with power thinking? What what was the journey? And also to a little bit about yourself that led to that journey. Sure. We'll start with power thinking. The, the company was uh, founded in uh, 2011, actually. So we're approaching 11 years. And the, um, the, the reason for creating the company was to acquire another company. So there was a company called Reflective Learning. And Reflective Learning uh, had two six-hour online resilience courses that were developed uh, by uh, folks at the University of Pennsylvania's Positive Psychology Center. And um, these are people who did uh, decades and decades of research around, you know, what makes people fall into this state of helplessness where even though they can achieve, they just don't believe that they can. And then uh, on the other side, of the scale, you know, what makes people more optimistic? Can people learn to become more optimistic, to become more resilient, to bounce back from adversity faster? Most of the time when we're faced with adversity, we find a way to bounce back. But the question is, can we bounce back faster? So um, I acquired the company. So that just didn't happen out of the blue. It was like, okay, well, there's a company that does resilience and create power thinking and and now you you own these assets, um, but it uh, this desire to create a company called Power Thinking came out of a, a life journey um, that started in Philadelphia as a youth. I I lived in, initially in a, a section of Philadelphia called Mantua, uh, is West Philadelphia, uh, and then North Philadelphia. Uh, around 30th and Diamond, you know, 32nd and Haverford in 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 West Philadelphia, in North Philadelphia, and then West Oak Lane, and so there were a, a, a unique set of experiences. Uh, certainly, you know, being you know African American and 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 growing up watching what was unfolding on television, and 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 starting to learn about the challenges that we had, you know, with what uh, Dr. Martin Luther King was organizing people to uh, to to fight, uh, you know, and uh, all of the uh, you know assassinations with John F. Kennedy and, and, and Dr. Martin Luther King, Bobby Kennedy, and so forth, and and so uh, the Vietnam War, uh, kind of avoiding that, just being kind of young enough such that by the time you know I was of draft age, it was over, but also things happening on the personal side, you know, with family. And, um, you know, things like, uh, you know, the separation of parents and, you know, which is, uh, you know, you kind of try to take it in stride, but it, uh, it does have an impact. And some of the things that led to that um, 
So um, having, you know, some degree of uh, money in, in the family and then having zero and uh, having to go out and carry packages, you know, and, but always trying to uh, having to bounce back and, and watching my mom have to bounce back after back in those days, they called these things nervous breakdown. Uh, mm -hmm. where, um, it was such so stressful in terms of that relationship between my mother and father. Uh, that she, she, you know, actually had to go to a hospital for, for 30 days. And I never knew where it was. I was a young person, but I knew that um, she was going for a period of time. And I knew that what triggered it, there were things that she would say and do, which said that something wasn't right. Um, and those kinds of things stayed with me. And then fast forward, I was able to, I graduated from a Philadelphia public school that had seven gangs. It was called Germantown High. It's closed now. And, and so in addition to thinking about education and what I needed to do to, to succeed, I had to, you know, keep in mind that, you know, there were a number of gangs that were, you know, you know mm -hmm. confronting each other after school. And we had to determine uh, who was going to fight on Germantown Avenue, who was going to fight and how, how, what our skate route was going to be to get home safely. But this was just part of life. This is just what you did. Right. It didn't point on me that uh, there were folks in other neighborhoods that didn't have these challenges. Um, and, you know, and we had, you know, as, as much as people talk about guns then, I remember a ninth grade person bringing a gun to school and uh, putting it in a book. Uh, I remember, you know, having our, our lunch period cut out altogether because of this, this, you know, disturbances and so forth. So it was challenging times, but I was able to, you know, get through it. I was able you know, to use sports and academics to get into the University of Pennsylvania, play basketball there uh, for a legendary coach who wound up winning two NBA championships after he left us and coaching the dream team with Michael Jordan and La uh, Magic Johnson and all those okay. folks. So I learned a lot about bouncing back through those experiences and then moving into the corporate wor world with companies. Uh, first with a telephone company and, and transforming a cable company that was in Delaware County uh, that was all, one of the, the worst in all of the suburban cable companies and and focusing on people's mindset and making turning them around from being negative and having a defeatist attitude to achieving. And it was assignment after assignment, uh, company after company, telephone company, uh, synthetic turf company, internet companies. I created a news channel that became CN8 at Comcast. It was called Tri-State Media. And so we were able to accomplish all of these things through focusing on people. So by the time I discovered this company called Reflective Learning that had this material, I thought, oh my goodness, this is the thing I've been doing all of my life. And, you know, if, if I could run this company, you know, it would just be fantastic. At the time, they, they had a CEO, but they embarked upon a strategy that, you know, forced their investors to spend too much money. It made, it, the company became available for sale. I was able to acquire it. And I said, this is where I'll spend the rest of my life, you know, helping people to bounce back from life's adversities, business, personal, whatever, faster through evidence-based materials. Faster is the key, right? It is. Especially in today's time, because we don't want to wait for anything, right? right. Yeah. Right. But we still Folks will say, hey, give me the time. course, I'll take it, and I and I should be changed. It doesn't happen. <laughs> if it were that easy. In our humanity, we you know, we we don't like change. And so anything that we have to put forth so much effort or a lot of effort into then, you know, and time, effort and time. It's like, uh, you know, we start off good and then we kind of wane off. Right. But we, when, if we hang in there, we can see the results and the fruit of our labor. And it's good for us, you know, and I know your program has been good for those people who have, um, you know, followed you and have taken your program. Um, you've gotten good results. So, so tell us how, um, you started the program, and what's some of the research behind it? Sure. So, uh, remember, I what I inherited uh, were, you know, a bunch of internet sites, uh, and particularly one called Resilience Online, and then there was one called R for Power. R for Power was uh, a resilience, a, a six-hour resilience program that was focused on teenagers, and um, 
and it was it was taught by one of the University of Pennsylvania professors. Um, Resilience Online was focused on adults, six hour program online, great content, and the content I, I now share in my calls. But you know, it was difficult for people with both programs to just kind of come back and stay with it for six hours and complete it uh, and so forth. And so uh, what I decided to do actually at the urging of one of my clients who was the vice president, uh, then the vice president of um, what was called Comcast University, it's still called Comcast University, the Comcast training arm. Uh, after I made a presentation to him about this and then tried and then you know got him to try out the program along with some of his colleagues, he said, Stan, you're better doing this yourself. <laughs> you do a better job than the folks, you know, who are you know, doing this uh, teaching the, in the program. And so that led me to, uh, number one, you know, try to present this on my own uh, in other countries. I, you know, did it with the Japan Positive Psychology Association in Tokyo, um, had a couple of trips there. And then uh, in Beijing and Chongqing, China, you know, through some uh, you know, partners there. And uh, in the United States, you know, we, we started offering these weekly calls because the thought was that it needed to be instructor led, but if you're going to help people to transform, you really have to help them build these skills so that it becomes muscle memory. You know, it's kind of like a person that would go to church you know, on a Sunday and be inspired by, you know, the pastor's message. And then, you know, thought, think, hey, you know what? I get it. I'm going to be a better person and more positive. And then they drive down uh, the road and get cut off, you know, on the highway, get cut off by somebody <laughs> else. And all of that right. goes out the window. They're ready to curse their person out and go, or, you know, a significant other press, you know, presses their buttons and now they're they're losing it. And they said, you see, you know, I was having a good day. I, you know, I was at church, mm -hmm. great message, and you, <laughs> you messed it up. Right. <laughs> it, was, it was the fact that they they haven't internalized mm -hmm. to the message, but a lot of what triggers them, you know, their deep beliefs about things and how they respond to di different triggers hasn't changed. And so, by having the repetition where we help yes. them understand these skills, repeat them over and over again through these 30 minute calls, 7.30 a.m. to 8 a.m. Eastern time on Wednesdays and then Wednesday, 9.30 p.m. to 10 p.m. Over time, give it about four to six months, they'll find themselves responding. It, 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 it don't even have to work at it, you know, because the material becomes so ingrained that now they can pick up when their thoughts may be going awry uh, when they may have fallen into thinking traps uh, mm -hmm. and it's a beautiful thing you have so many testimonials and so i i found that i did have something special here using the media uh, my, my experience in media because as you know uh, when yeah. you are exposed to media radio for example with music mm -hmm. you a song in, in in its first hearing and you're thinking uh, i don't like it but then it's, you hear it over and over. Right. It grows on you. It grows on you. But not only does it grow you on you. remember the words. <laughs> but you remember the words. And there are songs where in the first two seconds, mm -hmm. when it comes on, how it starts, you go, I know that song. And then you can sing right along, even though right. that song was popular decades and decades ago. Mm -hmm. it is, the mind is so powerful. So we're going to follow that model. And the model of TV advertising. You know, if I said to you, where's the beef? You would know what uh, 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 advertiser we're talking about. Or, you know, there was one I can go back well over 60 years. And it was a cigarette commercial. And they start off with Winston Tastes Good. And people can actually finish the line. Um, so, you know, we don't even recognize just how powerful media is and the influence it has. And then you take it to social media and that's a whole nother level. So we're yeah. just doing repetition once a week for only 30 minutes. And amazingly, it's having a positive impact on, on the people that participate. 
So I have joined um, your Wednesday calls more so yes. in the evening than in the morning. And uh, I'm quite impressed. Let me just say that. And um, that that rep I can tell how that repetition, you know, repetition is the mother of learning, right? And yes. how that repetition would do, in fact, just what it is that you're saying, because you go over the resiliency and the inner strengths uh, every time um, we're on the call. And like you said, without even studying it, if you're on the call consistently, you'll remember these things, right? And so it's a powerful tool. Can you step the audience through what they would receive if they were to join your call? And then after that, share with the audience how they can join your call. Sure. So <clears throat> uh, first of all, uh, University of Pennsylvania identified seven strengths. So they broke down resilience into, excuse me, mm -hmm. seven inner strengths of that, such that if if we if we're strong in these seven areas, that we will um, have a better chance of bouncing back from any adversity much faster. And, you know, when I go through these, you'll, you'll see that they make a lot of sense. They're common sense things. They're easily understandable by the average person. We're not talking about the kinds of things that we would learn in school through a psychology course, because it gets really involved with the scientific and psychological jargon. But this is common sense stuff. And here they are. The first uh, of the seven inner strengths is emotion regulation. Think about it. Think about all the things that could be avoided. You think these mass shootings, um, you know, uh, arguments. If if folks were really strong at their ability to stay calm under pressure. The next is related, and that is impulse control. And that is the ability not to say or do the first thing that comes to mind, the first thing that pops. And unfortunately, there have been many, I mean, we just had a, a police shooting and uh, first thing, somebody, a person turns around and running and they turn around, first thing they're thinking is up, oh, they're gonna shoot me. And, you know, they shoot 90, I mean, poor emotion regulation and impulse control. Uh, the third inner strength is empathy, the ability or to understand another person's experiences and emotions. Then there's self-efficacy. This is huge. Uh, there's so many people that don't believe in themselves, don't believe that they can make it, looking for someone else, maybe whoever they wrote for to help them. When in fact, they have tremendous power. And there's one part of the reason why we call the company uh, Power Thinking, because we have so much power that uh, we just fail to utilize. So self-efficacy is the belief that you have control. You have control over your ability to succeed. You don't move around life like, you know, uh, bumping cars in the in the carnival, you know, where you just kind of step on the gas pedal and then somebody bumps you and you go, you know, you go that way. You do have control. Next is optimism, the, the view that all things ultimately will have a successful outcome. It takes a lot to have that kind of view. Um, yeah. Next is causal analysis. That's number six, the systematic way of finding the root cause of a situation or problem. And then number seven is so important, probably the most important. And you're starting to hear a lot about this. There are commercials for uh, firms that can give people help in psychological counseling and so forth. Uh, there's one, I, I, well, I forget, but put the names aside. There's so many now. But what they say is, you have to reach out and reaching out is the seventh inner strength. Reaching out for help is actually a strength. It is not a weakness. And yeah. part of the challenge with stigma in society is that people have been conditioned to believe that when you're going out looking to, for help and asking for help, that it's a sign of weakness when in fact it's one of the uh, most powerful of the inner strengths of resilience. Because you're gonna stay in that rut if you're just gonna to try to figure it out for yourself versus you know, giving a call out to a family member or friend. So those are those seven inner strengths. And then what they've identified is that there are skills that can help you get stronger in those areas. Just as, I mean, I, I mentioned play basketball, 
And, you know, we would have practice every day for a couple of hours, practicing the same stuff that we already knew. I mean, we, the reason why we got to college, because we were you know pretty good in high school. And so we knew how to dribble the ball. We knew how to shoot the ball. But yet, guess what we did after classes for two hours? The same stuff. It's like, right. well, you, know, you know that? Well, it was to make sure that you're, you're getting sharper and sharper and sharper. But none of us, well, very few of us, certainly people, your clients, uh, our power thinkers, you know, like yourself, and thank you for being a Power Thinking Plus member, Sharon. Uh, oh, they right. are practicing these skills. So when someone um, uh, takes up, I'll say, the and starts to practice these inner strengths, they become more resilient, right? And then their decision making it affects their decision making in a positive way. How have some of your um, clients? Uh, what have they shared with you testimonial wise of how their decision making has changed by becoming a power thinker? Yeah, one of the biggest things is that they can um, one of the things we, we talk about to set the framework in our uh, sessions is to have people understand that our brains, you know, these powerful muscle that we have. This tool is, is and this asset is processing fifty thousand thoughts at least fifty thousand thoughts a day. Yeah, fifty thousand. And so we are just operating based on what our brains are, you know, telling us, you know, mm -hmm. how how we should respond. And so we just go, hey, I am the way I am, and this is what happens if somebody, you know, presses my buttons. This is the way I'm going to operate not realizing that we can take con better control you know of these automatic thoughts and so the people who have just been on these calls consistently we're not giving tests we're not giving quizzes we're not giving assessments just you can multitask and walk your dog and you know get ready for work it just be on your brain is going to start to absorb this and and it's, it's going to work that muscle and what people are finding is that um, they change the way they respond. You know, example I usually give, because there are seven skills, you know, like the skill of ABC, there's avoiding thinking traps that our minds will fall into, you know, typically we'll jump to conclusions or, we'll, or we think we know what somebody else is thinking. Oh, you think that I'm, well, that may not be the case at all. Without evidence, we'll fall into these thinking traps. And so as people become more aware of this, they can catch themselves. And as a result, they can avoid a negative emotion. Like when you're getting cut off on the road, people tend to believe that the typical response to getting cut off on the road is anger. That's, you know, I'm mm -hmm. entitled. The person did something to me. Right. And through what we call the skill of ABC, we can break it down and we find that, wait a minute, um, you're going from A, the adversity, somebody cutting you off, to a C, a consequence, which is your negative emotion. In this case, it would be anger. Mm -hmm. The reality is that it was your belief about what happened to you that prompted you to respond the way you responded. But if you change the belief, in this case, anger is usually caused because of a belief, a deep down belief that someone violated your rights. You did this to me. You violated me by cutting me off. Now, right. when in fact, maybe they didn't even see you. Uh, they don't know you. They, they were maybe in a rush to get somewhere. Um, they, they, they were sorry. So they weren't intentionally trying to violate you. Uh, so if you change that belief, wait a minute, maybe they weren't trying to do this to me. Maybe they don't know me, don't care to know me. They were just trying to get where they needed to go. I know I've uh, unintentionally cut people off from time to time in you know, the right. spot and I'm going to move over. I'm here to honking horn. The person's like really angry. Oh my gosh, I didn't mean it. I yes, right. But they're still going. No, no. I believe mm -hmm. you did this to me. Exactly. But if you the belief. Uh, you, the emotion, negative emotion, goes away. And there are five big negative emotions. Anger is one of them. So, you know, just take that example alone. I've had uh, testimonials where folks have said that 
even their significant other would notice that when, you know, when they would typically be on the road and get cut off, they would be angry and curse and maybe put up the finger uh, to mm -hmm. the person that cut them off. Uh, but yet, you know, after being with, uh, in these sessions, that negative emotion is non-existent. And in other cases, there are people who get anxiety when it comes to sales, for example. Mm -hmm. and, oh my gosh, I have to make a cold call. This person doesn't know me. I'm feeling that I'm feeling guilty because, you know, I'm calling this person and I'm intruding. You know, they don't expect my call and I'm going to try to make a pitch. And, and so therefore their belief is, you know, uh, they're violating somebody else's rights. Right. Uh, they'll, they'll tend to say, you know what? I'm not good at sales because I, I just, <laughs> I'm going to believe that I'm doing this to people. Uh, and that belief has to change. Um, right. So uh, there are people who, you know, they may be out of work for three months and then it turns to six months. And then they start wondering, jumping to a conclusion that perhaps uh, or believing that, you know, perhaps they're not, you know, getting any traction because of the race or because of their age or because of this. Or, and we can get into that rut mm -hmm. uh, where it just continues in a, in a, in a downward spiral. So we've had some some great feedback around uh, you know, people you know, working together better with their colleagues, uh, dealing with situations, losing a job, for example. I, I'll never forget the uh, you know the story where you know I was at a hotel where it was closing down. It was the last night, and I uh, got up in the morning, talked to the, the supervisor of the housekeeping people, and he was super angry. He said, "I spent 25 years with this company." And they did this to me, you know, they had closed down and they're laying me off. Uh, and I talked to the cashier and said, so what do you think about this? And I said, ah, you know, you know, just uh, I'll take two weeks vacation and find another job. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so totally different responses. But the people who are involved in what we do, they find themselves being able to improve their responses to life's adversities, it disputes with a significant other that can escalate and escalate and just go totally out of control to the point of no return over little things most of the time. Right. Things that can be dealt with immediately, mostly because of um, a lack of impulse control. Mm -hmm. I've been married now. This this year will be, will be going on 38 years. Congratulations. And, thank you. And marriages, look, <laughs> it's like this. Yes. You know, yeah, 38 years, they'll say, oh, man, which, you know, it, it must be a perfect marriage. Oh, well. Perfect we marriage. Have we have our challenges. But I'm telling you, over the past eight years or so, it, it's been very different than the 30 or so years. Because as opposed to the ups and downs, the drastic swings, they're more like this. Mm -hmm. and mostly because, you know, I have better impulse control. I may think something, but I am not going to say it. Right, right. <laughs> I avoid, totally avoid a situation that mm -hmm. could totally control because I, I could recognize that maybe I'm mind reading. Maybe I think I know what, you know, my significant other's thinking. And I could be very, very wrong. Exactly. Really, things like that. Other thinking traps. You jump to a conclusion about something. You don't have uh, all the evidence. Mm -hmm. You blame the other party for things that you really shouldn't, you have no reason to blame them for. Right. All of these things are major, can become major issues, um, you know, in relationships and in just about everything we do, except the average person has no idea um, how they can successfully deal with these issues and avoid situations, negative emotions, mm -hmm. and uh, be able to progress. Right. And, you know, that's what makes you know your what you do so powerful because like you said the average person doesn't know and i don't think that if um yes you know we know that there's resources out there but people don't often reach for those resources because of many reasons and that's one of the reasons why i do this show so i can bring people on such as yourself to uh, uh provide the resource for the people so hey if you want to change your thinking you want to have better outcomes here's stanley green and his power thinking corporation and what he does Here's a resource for you, right? And one of the things that um, I really love about your calls 
is uh, the videos that you send out the day before the call, because I think by having the visual that's demonstrating the circumstance that you're going to talk about the next day is a very powerful tool to get people to learn because they have a visual to put with the talk that you're going to have the next day. I think that's so powerful. How did Thank you come you. up with that concept? You know, um, I just thought, just as you said, that it's one thing to say something, um, but it's another if you can give them that visual. So we already have the seven skills that help you build the inner strengths, the skill of ABC, avoiding thinking traps, uh, detecting iceberg beliefs, uh, de challenging and pushing back on those beliefs. There's calming and focusing, putting things in their proper perspective, uh, real-time resilience. Uh, and so what I thought was, if I can find a video, and, and one of the things is we want to keep everything short, you know, no, you know, 90 yeah. minute sessions. So keep it short, 30 minutes and you're in and out. But if we could the night before, the only homework folks have, and I don't even call it homework, like we just send it out. Uh, and it's not homework because we keep it so short. Right. It's very so brief, very brief. And most of the time, tonight's video, um, which is really cool, is is on a particular skill called detecting icebergs, these deep rooted beliefs. And it's a, an exchange between, you know, um, a couple and they're actually on a military base. And, uh, you know, they start off really, really cool. And then, you know, uh, uh, the uh, wife kisses the husband goodbye, you know, gets the keys to the car, goes in the car, turns on the ignition. The car is on E. <laughs> It's empty and she's gone. I can't believe he did it. She gets out of the car and she is so mad. Mm -hmm. uh, and all day long, she's talking to friends about this and, and, and that whole dialogue. Now, that particular video is a little over five, but I rarely go over five minutes. But even five minutes, the I try to find something so impactful that, you know, it has people thinking and they just enjoy watching it mm -hmm. and they're ready to come in the next day and talk about it. Right, so, right. Yeah. And because most of the ones I've seen have been like two or three minutes. But like yes. you said, you get so engaged in the video because it's a it's a powerful video. It doesn't really matter how long it is. But the fact that you keep it short is good. You know what I mean? Because that's where we live today, right? Everything's microwaved, right? And so that's right. That attention span is has yeah. become so short. So uh, and yeah, the videos are so powerful, followed up by the talk, you know. Um it, it's and hearing video. different voices, right? It's yes. not just yes. me talking. You know, we give people an opportunity to give their thoughts about the video and the share mm -hmm. experiences and so forth. Yeah, their experiences and examples and how it's worked for them, how what they may have done in the past and what they're doing now is based on what they've learned from your calls. So um, it, it's very powerful. It's, it, you know, and it's a Thank wonderful um, tool that you've developed, a program that you've developed. I'm so excited about it and want more people to know about it. Because, again, the consistency over time, is, you know, can really change your thinking and then therefore change the outcome of what it is um our situations that we find ourselves in you know like you said road rage situations could turn around you know some marital issues could turn around you know workplace issues could turn around we are not even get there by one decision that we make right regulating our emotions not jumping to conclusions controlling our impulses by the way we think mass shooting possible right. mass shootings exactly police violence yes protection. all of that all of it and, and that's it. that's the tough thing to, for folks to really get we take these things for granted and then there, there are there's a lot of talk now about mental health but that's all that happens we say well we need more mental health we need to control the right. guns we need more mental health but no one's explained just how that is going to be implemented. Right, right, exactly. Then you have to go pay someone to find out, right? And so one of the things I do on this platform is I talk about mental health and I give the information out because I know everybody's not going to go to therapy, but then maybe with that conversation sparks something in them and then they go because i don't do therapy over the air but i give information and educate so now hopefully that sparks something new to want to go find your therapist because you realize you know i need to dig deeper into this you right. know something has caught my attention and hit a nerve i need to deal with some of these long 
a standing issue. So I can be better. I can be healed and 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 be emotionally and mentally well. You know, none of us will ever be 100%, but we can most certainly be better than we are today. My my motto, one of my mottos is be better today than yesterday and better tomorrow than today. And when we've done that by how the effort that we've been putting into things and the consistency, it's going to happen. It can't not happen if you put that effort and consistency into it, you know, but a lot of times we're in our own way, right? With our own thinking, like you said, I don't, I don't need that. And how you alluded to, not alluded to, you said earlier, um, you know, uh, certain things that we think are a sign of weakness, because that's how we've been trained, you know, but when it's actually a sign of strength, you know, to ask for help. The sign of weakness to therapy is a sign of weakness to, to get a coach, you know, or, or things of that nature. Crying is a sign of weakness. It is not. It is a sign of strength when you can sit with yourself and be okay with who you are as a human being, tears and all, emotions and all, help and all. And I'm okay with it, regardless of what the next person thinks, because it's about me and my well-being. And I'm, I'm good with how I am as a human being. God made all of this in me, emotions too, right? That's right. And we feel exactly. things all day, every day. Whether we recognize it or not, it's still happening. And we have to tap into what those emotions are to then be able to know what we need to regulate, right? right. And so That's we right. have to identify those things. There's so many things, so many nuances, and so much that goes into it. If we were just to sit down with someone such as myself or join your call we would learn so much because you said the average person doesn't know these things we've studied these things so this is how we know can you speak a little bit to learned helplessness and how that had created some of what a lot of actually what we are have been dealing with and are dealing with that then what your program shifts yeah, the, the the foundation for everything that we talk about in this framework starts with, uh, and folks can Google this term, learned helplessness. One of the most powerful things that I ever discovered, and uh, it was you know, kind of a theory. There, there, this young psychologist at the time, this was in the late '60s, about the time that I was living in, uh, in in North Philadelphia, and then moved out to West Oak Lane. In the meantime. At the University of Pennsylvania, a gentleman by the name of Dr. Martin Sullivan, who still runs the Positive Psychology Center at Penn, um, he's considered one of the fathers of this new branch of psychology called positive psychology. But it all started with his work, uh, and it's what he's known for around in experiments around this 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 concept um, theory called learned helplessness. And what it basically said was that we can actually fall into a state of powerlessness where we don't feel we have any power over anything as a result of suffering through a traumatic event, one or more traumatic events, um, or just a series uh, of failures to succeed in whatever we are trying to succeed in. We have one failure and some people can get really distraught over one failure and then others is you know successive failures and then we get into a mode where you know we just don't believe that we can make it and in my view i believe there are entire communities that feel that mm -hmm. way through perhaps a um, you know, multi-generational trauma as yes. a result of things that have happened that we we, we kind of still we're still alive and we're still pushing through but don't believe that we may have the ability to really ascend, ascend mm -hmm. you know, and take off and so um this was uh you know pretty much a a a, a landmark uh, study and led to other studies uh around all right so if people can fall into this set this the, into the state of learned helplessness where they feel that they have no power and that's why there are a number of people that would say well uh i'm gonna i can't wait to vote you know after for to vote for this person because maybe something will change when they really have the power to right. do it uh and it's all in that thinking so seligman's you know studied the opposite well if people can learn to be helpless can they learn to be more resilient? Can they learn to be more optimistic? 
And that's where what we do comes in because okay. we've proven that people can learn skills and build up strengths so that they can uh, they can get out of that learned helplessness or or just continue to climb. Okay. So, so this, uh, how long has have you had the call on on Wednesday mornings and evenings? Interesting. It's going on four years now since 2018. Wow. Yeah. Okay. But remember, I had the company since 2011. So for years, mm -hmm. I was trying to actually sell the the program that I right. did, and it just just never worked. Mm -hmm. Whatever I tried to do, uh, get people to you know check it out for free and so forth, and folks would take a module or two mm -hmm. and just wouldn't come back. Excuse me. And then others uh, would very few would actually finish the course. But that did nothing because it was just like anything else. OK, well, I have the course, you know, give me a quiz, you know, within 24 hours after the course, maybe I'll do OK. Right. But it, we're talking about trying to transform people. So one exposure to something through your regular educational methods is just not going to accomplish it. Mm hmm. That's when, again, we somehow came across, you know, doing these calls and that works, definitely works. Yes. And people have stuck with you consistently internationally. This is just not a local call. You have people all over the globe who are calling in consistently. Oh, yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. We've had folks from Canada, Australia, uh, Africa. Yeah. I've heard them. Yeah. <laughs> Can you tell the audience how they can become a part of your power thinking call on Wednesdays? Sure. So one of the fastest ways would be to uh, just, I'll give you my number, give out my number and you can text me your first and last name. I will get you in the, the, uh, the texting database and it'll automatically send you the phone number, the times and the and a text reminder before each of the calls. Uh, you also get on Tuesday nights. Now tonight's video already went out, but if you, if this is, um, you know, uh, Tuesday night, July 5th, uh, and you get me your information, I will go back and, and send out <laughs> that, um, that particular video to you so that you'll have that, you know, for tomorrow. Um, so, 215-219-8409. It's 215. I'm sorry, go right here. Say it again. 8409. I did a little radio too, so we don't gotta repeat you it. Have, I was gonna tell you, you have a great radio voice. <laughs> right. I used to do I used to do financial uh talk shows and, and financial tips on WDAS uh, radio in Philadelphia. Oh, okay. All right. Maybe that's right. why I recognize the voice. <laughs> yeah. I will come in with Good morning. This is Stanley H. Green checking the best money rates. And, you know, we do that. Yeah. <laughs> OK, OK. All so, right. uh, so we have that in common in our background. Radio. Yes. But, but you know what I found was I thought that that was the answer. That people mm -hmm. needed that financial information. But, you know, as we move forward, I thought it's not just the information because people can have the information and do nothing with it. You really need Absolutely. to change the mind, you know, uh, and their mindset and uh, what they think about, and, you know, uh, so, so that's it. 215-219-8409. Now the other way is to go on the site. Now, if you go on the website, which is www.powerthinkingcorp.com, that's powerthinkingcorp.com, um, you will uh, have a, it will be a pop-up box that comes up where you can put in your name and email address uh, so do both. Now, once you do that, you will get an email that will give you 30 pow free power thinking affirmations, some affirmations that you can use when you get up in the morning and so forth. Three day, and then you'll have an opportunity to become a Power Thinking Plus member as well. You know, you can hit the 995 uh, and then go in and, and become a, a 995 Power Thinking Plus member, which gives you other benefits. Three days after you get that email, you'll get another email, which the seven inner strengths of resilience. What I read to you uh, the, from my piece of paper, it's the same sheet that you'll get, which will have the seven inner strengths. And then three days after that, you'll get a sheet with the seven, 
skills of resilience. And then um, after that, you'll get another opportunity to join us as, as Power Thinking Plus member. You get other benefits. You'll get access to two years of of recordings, recorded calls. So you can binge learn. You talk about Netflix and and binging on entertainment. You can actually binge on changing your mindset. So that instead of three to six months or for four to six months, uh, you may be able to do it in 30 days. Um, so binge watch uh, and, and binge read something that's going to add tremendously to your life. So oh, yeah. that's awesome. That is awesome. So um, everyone who's watching and everyone who watches on the replay, uh, Stan's information is in the chat where to text him as well as his website. So you have his contact information to join the uh, uh, power thinking call on Wednesdays in the morning and Wednesdays in the evening. It is free. However, you can become a member at, I think you said $9.99 a month. Is that so? And, and you get yeah. $9.95, you get access to all of those things Stan just said. So $9.95 a month, I mean, we waste that in a week, right? So that's nothing for yeah. the results that you're going to get by being a power thinking member um, in, in Stan's program. So I encourage, I am a member, I encourage everyone listening and those of you who are listening on the replay to uh, join Stan's power thinking call. It will benefit your life. So Stan, tell us what's the what's in the future of power thinking call. Sure. Well, the future is uh, we're looking to to really scale this. And then we want to get um, what are, I'm targeting actually through LinkedIn connections um, and, and mental health professionals like yourself. And we're going to ultimately we're going to get you all listed on a page so that, um, you know, I teach this stuff, but I am not you know, the, the professional that you are, I've done a lot of work with companies and with people, but I want to have, you know, uh, more credentialed people so that when folks have serious, really serious issues and you've been on the calls and from time to time, you'll hear someone that really has a challenge, mm -hmm. usually direct them somewhere else where we can direct them to, you know, to professionals who are part of the power thinking network. So um, that's one of the, the things that's uh, on the horizon. Uh, okay, sure. awesome. Mm -hmm. Any parting words that you would like to leave uh, with our audience tonight? Well, I, I'll say what I, what I typically leave uh, folks with on our calls at the end of it. Remember, we said that uh, there, folks have 50,000, our brains are processing 50,000 thoughts a day. What I didn't mention earlier is that 70 to 80% of those thoughts are typically negative or repetitive, or repetitive negative, right? Um, uh, when is this gun violence going to start? Stop. Mm -hmm. It's going to stop. You know, the gun violence is horrible. But then they going to change the law. So um, since we spend all of our time thinking, it's not a time. We can be, even when we sleep, you know, we wake up, you know, it's crazy dreams like, wow, man, my brain was really working in over, over time. I just went back to sleep for like 20 minutes and uh, felt like I was in a whole different universe. So our brains are constantly thinking. Since we spend all of our time thinking, we must think with power, not feeling defeated, but think with power and utilize power thinking. Awesome. Great message. Well, thank you so much for joining me this evening, Stan. I really appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule and sharing with my audience all the knowledge and wisdom that you shared this evening and much success to uh, to Power Thinking Corp and everything that you do in the future to raise the bar on our thinking because it's so necessary. And so I appreciate the work that you do. And uh, I look forward to the call tomorrow. I haven't watched the video yet, but I'll be doing it tonight. <laughs> and I look forward to, to the call tomorrow. So, ladies and gentlemen, that is the end of our show. Stanley Green from Power Thinking Corp was our guest this evening. And those of you who watch this on the replay, I hope that you were blessed by this information and that you will take the information in the chat and become a member of Power Thinking Corp. So you can have access to all of that information. But if you don't become a member, it's, it's still free. So take advantage of the information that's out there because 
this type of information you spend thousands of dollars for. And so he has it at the ready for free and only $10, $9.95 a month if you want to um, be a part of the membership where you have access to so much more information. So this is a great resource. Please tap into this resource because it will benefit you. So join me tomorrow for a live episode of Race Matters. Tomorrow we have on again, Dr. Randolph Walters talking about racial healing, racial healing from racial trauma. We need healing. And that's tomorrow night at 8 p.m. Our new time, Race Matters, Wednesday night, new day and new time, Wednesday evenings at 8 p.m. starting tomorrow. And this Thursday at 9 p.m., a new show, Life with Sharon, talking all things the Christian faith walk and all that that encompasses. So watch us tomorrow night at 8 p.m. and Thursday nights at 9 p.m. And we will be back here next Tuesday at 9 p.m. for another episode of Life Matters with another interview. Thank you so much for joining us. God bless you. Shalom.